Hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Monday, Mindset Monday. Get your mind right and get the week started off right. I'm Trey Griggs with Beta Consulting Group. Excited about today's episode of Standing Out, a daily podcast about sales, marketing, and leadership powered by Beta Consulting Group. If you would, do me a favor, jump over to betaconsultinggroup.com and see how we can help you out. We're the sales and marketing strategist looking out for you. And while you're there, click on the events page because definitely want you to see about the Tough Mudder Charity Challenge coming up in just about 20 days now, 19 days, something like that. We're going to rock nine miles and 30 obstacles, raise money for Battle Buddy 3-Gun. And the uh, link to go ahead and help us out there, contribute to that nonprofit is right there on the page. So we'd love for you to help us out, help us raise $100,000 to impact wounded, paralyzed veterans. Super excited about that. Also, everybody, we've got a killer week of shows or a week of uh, guests, uh, uh, I guess, shows this week, whatever I want to say on that. This week's going to be awesome as well. I'm super excited about today. We'll bring Shannon on in just a minute. Um, this guy's uh, awesome. Tomorrow, my good friend, Anthony Petit, the uh, co-founder of uh, Truck Park, who's now just a, uh, an executive and a serial entrepreneur doing crazy, crazy cool things. He'll be on tomorrow. You'll want to hear his story for sure. On Wednesday, my good friend, Natasha Hammock is going to be on. She deals with branding and corporate um, you know, communications at Hire Master, which is a really great technology to help drivers find better jobs out there, um, which is awesome. On uh, Thursday, Cameron Robertson, the CEO of 3PL Systems, he's going to be on. And what's cool about him is he started at the very bottom and worked his way up. So I can't wait to talk about that and, uh, and him just making the progression up the ladder to become the CEO of that company. And then we're going to be in on Friday with Dave Abels, uh, who is a former CEO and executive in the industry, now works at uh, Three Sons Investments. So a lot of good stuff coming up this week, and uh, we're very excited about that. Okay, folks, that's enough. Uh, let's get this guy on the show. So much good to talk about today. Can't wait for it. My good friend from Freight Vonda, the CEO, and I guess co-CEO and founder of Freight Vonda, Shannon Bream. Shannon, come on, man. Come on. Look at this. Look at this hat, man. Like, <laughs> I don't wear a lot of hats because I got this going on, but this yeah. hat is just slick, man. I love this. Thank you so much for giving me this hat. One of my favorites, man. Look at that. That is sharp. I, I thought we like talked about the whole show. I thought we talked about going how we used to rock it in junior high and just let it sit on the wedge. You know, that way you don't take well, away the signature. It's not, it's not quite strong enough, like this right here. Yeah, one that's, of how, the, that's one of those right there. That kind of thing going. This is a long. I don't want to date myself, long? but that's how we used I know to you do have it. To put, you got to put the logo under here if you're going to do that, because now we can't see the logo. You know what I'm saying? It's a little Jesper Parnovic action, maybe, for those that are our next match. Like myself. Our next match. That's right, next match. How you doing, man? What's going on? I'm doing good, man. Long week. I saw you last week in uh, San Diego, right? Obviously, that was a lot of man, fun from an industry good? perspective. Um, it was really good to get back, right? Meet people. Um, that association's meant a lot to me in my career. I know it's done a lot for you, and you just felt the energy. I felt like you... you uh, had a lot of good content, a lot of good conversations. We did the same, so it was good to get back. Oh, it was tremendous. I felt like the just the vibe of that show was just one of the best I've been to. The cool thing about, I've told a lot of people this, the cool thing about the Transportation Intermediates Association is that it's a group of like-minded people that even though we're competing, a lot of people are competing with one another, there's a ton of collaboration and people are open to that and talking about how they can do better and how we can help each other out. So to me, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's one of the hallmarks of the TIA show, but it was great, man. It was awesome. I got to do some word on the street interviews and obviously see a bunch of people that I'd only seen their faces and, uh, on, on screen and got to see him and shake their hand for the first time like yourself, which was just tremendous. Yeah, it was, it was weird because awesome. right I think this was the one to your point where I was probably about eight to 10 people that I had met from an industry perspective over the last few years that I'd never met in person for obvious reasons. Oh, yeah. So this was like the, oh, this is, oh, hey, really cool to meet That's you right. in person for the first time, right? I probably Only had like eight to 10? Man, probably I like, like, like 20 or 30. Man, yeah. That's a lot. But, you got a lot more connections than I do. So, <laughs> well, the funny thing is, you don't know how tall people are. You just don't know. So, like some people, you look like, oh dang, like you're really tall. I bet for a lot of people, they look at me and go, "Geez, you're short." Like, what ha what happened to you? <laughs> yeah, but you don't know, right? You don't know because yeah. you look on screen. So it's good. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your career. I want to really dig in today on some leadership stuff and and get a little background. Tell everybody who may not know the Shannon Bream story. You know, twenty seconds. You know where you came from and, and where you're at now. Yeah. Um... Started my career in, in finance, right? Always had an entrepreneurial spirit. Did some entrepreneurial work in my early 20s. Um, didn't go well. 2008 happened. Uh, <laughs> lost a lot. Learned a lot. I tell people all the time, it's probably the most educational point of my career. Um, did some FP&A work for a, a private equity company, company out here in Phoenix. And then transitioned to freight logistics in 2012 for the first time. Knew nothing. I uh, remember being on stage in my first three weeks. Our CEO at that time put me on stage to talk about our services and plans. I remember at that time, 
I didn't even know really what dedicated was. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a fish out of water, right? And so uh, that was my first foray into transportation. Uh, worked for, for, for night for the, my entire career in trucking logistics. Um, and then we did the merger with Swift in 2017. So had a lot of opportunities with um, combining those two brands from a logistics standpoint, technology uh, on the innovation front. Um, and then just overall going through that experience before starting Freight Vana. Uh, last year with my co-founder John Gamero, uh, which has been nice. which has been a journey of a lifetime, Trey. Yeah, you know, and let's talk about that because you know most people would hear that story and go, "Wow, you were an executive at Knight Swift." I mean, I think you rose all the way up to um, SVP of Logistics. I think was your was that your last title there, SVP of Logistics? Uh, I did logistics and intermodal for a period of time, so I had the okay. enviable slash unenviable opportunity of managing <laughs> two of our three reportable segments. So, from a size and a visibility perspective. That have been the biggest yeah. kind of opportunity of, from a professional career perspective. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think I, I mean, we talked about this a little bit at the show. A lot of people would look at that and go, "Wow, that's that's got to be a dream job." I mean, that's look look where you look where you've risen to. Look what you're getting to do. Look at your visibility in this company that is so well known in the industry, and yeah. yet you chose to walk away from that. Talk a little bit about that transition. What kind of led to that, and why Freight Vana? Yeah, I think hey, on the personal front, because right, I think you when you think about, we all have these personal lives that happen outside of our professional. So I guess to start there, um, my father got diagnosed a few years ago uh, with a, with a rare bone cancer. Uh, for me, that was an aha moment, right? I would leave my job, go see my dad um, battling through Trey. And for me um, to see your father like that really was an eye opener. And I think what I started to do is take inventory of what I wanted to accomplish. You start talking about legacy, I start thinking about, hey, what would my dad want to see out of me? Now, my dad is a, was a school teacher along with my mom. Yeah, but I'll tell you, look, yeah. as a young boy, my dad was like this hobbyist entrepreneurial spirit to him. And so I remember vividly when I was a kid, he was trying to run like a this cool like sticker type deal out of the garage. And like, <laughs> so even though he was teaching, right, he always had this this entrepreneurial ambition. And so part of that decisioning when I saw my father and started thinking about my career and that legacy was like, and I have it in me too, but I hadn't really tapped into it full scale was like, Hey, what if I built a brand from scratch? What would it take? How would I do it? Um, and then a little bit owed to my father who always kind of was a hobbyist and never really gave up teaching to do the entrepreneurial thing. I, for me, I was like something about it just drew me to it and said, I want to do this not only for my own growth, because I believe it's possible, but, but I honestly think my dad would look back and be like, my son did it, you know, and I never really took the full leap, but my son did. And that, yeah, and that yes. honestly, on a personal note, people want to know the why that that's what speaks to my core. Dude, that's so cool. I love hearing that story. And how's your dad doing? I don't know. We didn't get a chance He's to doing talk about good. that. Yeah. You get that. And you know, even when you, when, you know, for a lot of people out there that have, you know, uh, watched friends and loved ones go through it. Um, you know, uh, even when they're better, there's, it still takes a toll, right? And and they think the other thing about that toll, you know, my father's 70 now and uh, they don't bounce back. You don't, people don't bounce back the same. And so you have this appreciation right. for really, really doing what speaks to you because as you get older, you realize like, it's just, you don't bounce back the same way. And so you really gotta, you know, people talk about it from an obligatory, like, hey, value your time and time is short, but until it's like right there in front of your face, it just doesn't feel the same as the words that people share with you. So for me, it spoke to me and led me on this journey. Yeah. And it really is a, a tribute to being self-aware. And like you said, taking inventory of who you are, but more importantly, of like what you want. You know, I think that too many people go through life not knowing what they want or not pursuing what they want. Maybe they know, but they just don't do it for whatever, whatever reason, maybe fear, maybe whatever it is. But at that point, you decide, you know what, I'm going to go for this. And you really stepped away from an incredible position to start Freyvana, yeah. which I have to say, you guys have made some incredible waves just in a you know, year, year well, it's been about a year now. When did you guys actually open doors? Yes, we opened the doors in June of last year. So oh, we wow. haven't even got to our year, year yet. Wow. Um, but crazy. I give a lot of credit. You know, you talk about the, the leadership aspects. I give a lot of credit to the team I assembled, right? I think for me, it wasn't about me and John. It wasn't about him. It was like, we want to come into this industry a little bit different from bootstrapping, right? I can fully appreciate people that from a leadership perspective, truly, truly bootstrap. We wanted to do it a little bit differently. And so we, we have been working hard from the early stages, even now on bringing in some of the best talent in the industry to surround us, right? And so 
it's all about the mission. It's all about the team. Um, people ask me what the exit strategy is. I tell them I don't care. Um, I think that's the benefit of maybe growing up the way I did, right? With with parents as school teachers, it was all about teaching. Yeah. It was all about coaching. It was all about growing people. That was the value. Obviously, mm -hmm. for anybody that's also been involved with elementary school teachers, um, maybe this is breaking news. That job doesn't pay a ton of money. Um, <laughs> But what I that know. job does, Trey, <laughs> is it gives you other value mm -hmm. that you can't put a stamp on, right? And I'd see my my parents find value in teaching little kids how to read, in doing plays, in, in creating these events as my dad is a coach. And that value does not show up on a paycheck. So for me, doing Freight Vana was the ability to stay in an industry I love with transportation logistics, hopefully be on the forefront of change and evolution in the industry and be able to coach and give back and build a team and help grow people in a way that, you know, when, when you start a company, you really have kind of a blank slate to be able to choose your path. So for me, those are all the reasons why I'm here today. Yeah. And I echo, you know, Coleman's sentiments, you know, kudos to you for doing that. Coleman, thanks for watching the show. And Mike Riccio as well. It's good to see him. And um, he loves what you're doing over at Freyvon as well, which is awesome. You know, it's interesting because um, you think about, you know, what you did and, and there's several ways to grow, to build a company, several ways to grow. Um, you kind of took the approach of, hey, I'm going to get the best team. I'm going to draft the best team, basically. I'm going to get the best players, then we're going to run as fast as we can. Other okay. people might want to bootstrap it, like you said, or try to develop talent. Maybe I'm going to find people who are hidden gems and develop them. I come from that teacher background as well. You know, before I did this, I was a physics teacher in high school, and that was my favorite job, bar none. To this day, it's my favorite job. This one's really good, getting close. It's starting to, starting to do that. But, you know, the only reason I'm not doing this is because it didn't pay, which how sad is that? You know, my wife wanted to stay home. It's like, well, it's hard on the teacher income. Just, just want a teacher income. I didn't want to be a principal. I love the students. I love that aspect of it. Um, but I had to make a choice. But the cool thing is now I feel like I'm in the same realm. I'm teaching now. I'm coaching. I'm helping. I said this at the last session at CIA. I had the privilege to be on stage with Brent Orsuga and Chris Jolly for the last session at yeah. CIA, which was just an honor. It was amazing. But, you know, I said this and I really believe this. I believe that my job as a CEO of Beta Consulting Group is to help everybody on my team to build their dream, whatever it is. And that dream might be within my company. And that's cool because it might be around for a long time. That's awesome. Or it might be that it's outside of my company or someday they're going to move on. But I really see my job as developing people. And when you take that as your why, which is, I think that's completely what your why is, you're developing people, you're developing talent. You just happen to do it through moving freight. I happen to do it through sales and you know, marketing, consulting and podcasting. But the why yeah. is how can I help people be great? And it sounds like that's exactly what you're focused on at Freyvana. Yeah. Yeah. And hey, they teach their own. Right. But I do see a lot of companies in the space focusing on valuations, spoke, focusing on um, maybe, you know, uh, owner earnouts or worth and this. And, and to me, honestly, and I think this is the value tray of me having the experiences I did before uh, and what I walked away from. The why wasn't the paycheck. The why wasn't the equity. Mm -hmm. The why wasn't that. The, and, and what I'm seeking is something different. Um, and here, here's the funny part, and I tell people all the time, in, in doing this and creating this, this the, the ceiling is arguably way higher, but it's not the driver. So it's this this sick transition that you go through where right, right. You know, your ceiling becomes really higher, but for me, I care less. And so it's this weird coexistence of those two uh, philosophies that's kind of driving me. But towards leadership, towards growing this team, yeah. Um, and, and all the stuff you see from our brand and the industry about maybe shaking things up and they'll be a little bit different in, in our approach. Man, I, I couldn't uh, emphasize or echo that anymore. You know, like the idea that, you know, now that now that I have a company that the, the potential is much greater, I can make a lot more if, that, if, if I want to. Right. Which is that's cool. Right. That can provide opportunities for my family and, and be more generous and give. Those are all cool things. But, yeah, at the end of the day, like I want the people on my team to know how much they're loved how much they're cared for, how much I care about them and how much I, I really want them to succeed. Even if that means that I lose them someday, you know, I, I always like that phrase, mm -hmm. train people well enough that they can go anywhere and be successful, but treat them well enough. They never want to, like, I want to embody that as much as I can. I'm going to lose some people. They're going to go do other things. That's cool. But man, if I can take that approach with everybody, I think that's going to be the, 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 the real like highlight and the real mark of what I'm doing now. It's not maybe making more money someday. And who knows this may, thing may go belly up. I don't know. Right. I mean, this, that's the risk you take. You just don't know. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, if I can help people have a better life and, and develop skills and great confidence and things like that, I mean, I, I'm all for that. You know, I'm so excited about yeah. that. There's Let's transition like for, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm just saying say there's nothing like team too, right? This industry and mm -hmm. the structural model, or let's say the traditional model. Yes. They've got this umbrella of team, but then you see how it's set up. Everyone's working very individualistically. 
um, in, in incentives and a lot of the componentry that builds a typical logistics company. So it's like, we want to be this team, but structurally everything's set up for everybody to kind of act uh, independently or selfishly. Right. And I think that's a miss. I think that for me, that's a miss. For what I want to develop here, what John wants to develop here at Freyvana is we are aligned in a mission. I think, and you worked right. at a big company, and there's some people out there that worked at big companies. What the most difficult challenge is to feel like everybody's rowing in the same direction. So for me, priority number one from a team perspective is we're all in the same boat. We know where we're going, and we're all rowing the same way. Then if you add the talent to it, right, Trey? That's an unstoppable oh, yeah. force. Now you've got just, right. you're just all going, you're all rowing. Somebody struggles, someone's row or break. Someone, it doesn't matter. Everybody else is still rowing in the same direction and you don't feel like you're going against each other. That's been probably the coolest, most special opportunity to kind of reset that. And because you're building it from the ground up, make sure that's the mission that all oars and directions are the same. Um, at big companies, I think anybody that's on this this line that follows you and is watching us today can attest to. Sometimes that's one of the biggest challenges is getting that alignment internally. Um, and for some like me, it just meant starting over and building that the way I wanted it to be. Yeah, without a doubt. And shout out to Coach PJ Fleck, the University of Minnesota, the row the boats. You know, yeah. love that mantra that he has. Uh, you got, we got to hear him at the mastermind event that Lean Solutions put on in February. Yeah. He spoke, but man, he had everybody fired up, about to run out, out of the room after that. But mm -hmm. no, you're right. I mean, getting everybody aligned and uh, making sure that they're moving the same direction. I mean, it's like, I think of it like this. So this is the way that I think I'm a musician. You know, I got my guitar back there. I think musically, right. Being a CEO is a lot like being a conductor, you know, uh, of, a, of a symphony. The symphony starts really small. You might even be playing some of the instruments at the beginning, but at some point your job is to make sure that everybody's playing the same tune. And it sounds beautiful. Yeah. You know, and that every, if anybody has a problem, you kind of help them out, maybe, you know, coach them to be better. But at the end of the day, you're creating this symphony that's going to have this beautiful sound that everybody's going to be like, man, did you hear us do that? Did you hear that? You know, like that kind of thing. I remember my freshman year in high school, I played uh, French horn and we went down to Missouri state uh, in Springfield and we played and they recorded it. It was the first time that I had heard our, our band. Cause when you're, when you're playing it, it kind of sounds good. But when you hear it outside of yourself, then you can really, was it good? Was it bad? You can really evaluate. And it was just one of those moments where it's like, oh my gosh, look at look at what we did as a group. Yeah. And that's the sentiment you're going after at Fravana. What's cool about your story, and I was thinking about it as you're talking, like musically and mechanically, I've got to be the worst person ever. So like I love that logistics <laughs> is this industry where people from all these different attributes, right? Because people will sometimes from the outside be like, Oh, did you get a supply chain degree? Most of the professionals I work with don't have supply no. chain degrees, right? I get people all the time like, oh, well, I've got a degree in supply chain. I'm like, yeah, but the jobs, the roles, the problem solving, I have a couple people that fit maybe like supply chain analyst roles. But as we both know, the people aspects of this business, most That's of the everything. roles aren't that. But when I heard your music story, like how it spoke to you, like you come from, you know, the teaching, the music, that speaks to you. I have finance and like pick up basketball and these things that speak to me that I, so everybody comes to logistics in these different ways, which I think is cool about it. But yeah, if you want anything musically or mechanically, I am not your guy. So <laughs> we all have our things, right? No, doubt yeah. about it. Uh, no, you're right about that. And I think most people in logistics probably didn't even ever think they'd be in logistics. They didn't start out that way, uh, but they find out it's a great industry and uh, it's one that's good yeah. to get into. Dan Penrod, thanks for joining us morning. DJ, same thing. And uh, thanks for everybody who's watching, Catherine. And be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and leave those comments. We love seeing everybody. And then Joshua Breeze. Josh, I need to get you on the show, man. I uh, need to... Need to, need to get you as well. We talked about that earlier. All right, Shannon, I want to transition because obviously you're, you're leading for Yvonne. You guys are doing some tremendous stuff out there. But one thing that we talked about too, and this is about being self-aware about who you are, is sometimes leaders forget that when they leave the office, there's another job waiting for them yeah. to leave. And that's at home, you know, parents and, yeah. and doing that. Talk a little bit about how the transition has also coincided with your kids and where they're at and how you're, you know, how you're taking on that role of really being a present leader at home. Yeah. So I think, so you asked the why of the journey. So I, I mentioned my father, right? There's another big ad piece of that, which was COVID, right? And and I think what COVID really illuminated for me, Trey, was interesting because we went from this like work from home. Uh, for me, I was driving 45 minutes each way to work. So an hour and a half in the car, leaving early, working out in the morning, not seeing my kids before school, coming home late. Mm -hmm. um, and then COVID happened. Now, when COVID happened, our two main offices shut down. I ended up working in like a satellite place, like 10 minutes from the house. And it was like, it, it kind of shook me a little bit that like, hold on, I can get my boy cereal in the morning. I can say goodbye, kiss him <laughs> on his forehead and wish him a good day. Maybe even sometimes dropping off at school. 
Um, oh, and what really better. hit me about that journey was, wow, I'm missing a lot of time and experiences with my kids mm -hmm. and I'm sacrificing this. If I go on this journey, I want to be very mindful and I want to make sure I'm making those similar investments like I'm making for this team, like I'm making for our carrier and our shipper partners. Am mm -hmm. I making the commensurate investment for my family? And so like every morning I pour my, pour my boy cereal now. Now that may seem inconsequential, but I'm telling you, when I him. Bed, my little <laughs> seven year old, he always asked me, dad, are you going to be here before I go? Because I could tell in him, like he loves it too. Oh yeah. And that just means the world to me to be able to pour him that bowl of cereal, literally 30 seconds before I leave the house. But at least I get to say hi, get him his cereal, get him set up. Um, and so COVID really was that piece for me that really made me reevaluate mm -hmm. my relationships um, and this journey relationships because you know Trey as you grow through an industry like you get your salary and you get your title and people think oh your salary and your title and your role are what you're about and I, I really use COVID and this journey to really invest in the friendships that I wanted to be better um, both mm -hmm. professionally and personally um, but the biggest one being my family you know and for me being able to have that flexibility not that I didn't have flexibility before but the demands were a little bit different and the expectations were a little bit different um, but the ability to, to really invest in my family, do different things. Um, and hey, let's be really honest. And I'm sure you went with this too. That the thing that people don't appreciate about a journey like this, it's really like without my wife, Freight Vonda doesn't happen. Because at some 100%. point, right, I've got to go walk into my wife and we live a beautiful life, a very little comfortable life, the compensation there, all of these things are there. And I've got to sit down with her and be like, hey, babe, so... John and I have been talking like, I want to take a leap at that moment. And you can appreciate this at that moment. We, we can go both. I mean, I guess there's a couple ways it could go, but let's talk binary. <laughs> right. Absolutely not. Right. Could have been one answer. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or absolutely. Yes. And I would give credit to my wife, Summer. When we had that conversation, it was, it was quick. It was confident. You've been successful. If this is your passion and you and John are going to create a team, I think you'll be wildly successful. We should do this. We should do this. Right. And so <laughs> I, I think for anybody looking at taking that journey, you got to make sure you're in a good spot in the home life, mm -hmm. because I tell people all the time, had she said, absolutely not. Then freight fauna probably doesn't happen, Trey. And so I owe all the, 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 the respect and the success, whatever that may be. She's as much part of that journey because she had to make the bet with me. And that's, what's been special too. Dude, that uh, that is so good to hear, man. I love that. I have the same same journey. In fact, you know, my wife knew that I was entrepreneurial for a long time, and she's very risk averse. Like, she's not one to jump off a cliff. She's not going to do it, right? Um, and it took her a long time to kind of figure it out. But we reached a point where she's like, "You need to go do it. You need to go do it." And I can guarantee that Beta Consulting Group does not exist without her support, hundred percent. And to go back to what you said about pouring the bowl of cereal for your son, like, yeah, that that might seem as co consequential, but that's the biggest part of his day, probably at this point. Like, he talks about it at night before he goes to bed. Like, that's huge and those are the memories that, that kids have even if it's something small and so you know i always like to say you know qual quantity of time is important with kids but man quality is equally as important if you're not present if you're not doing something that's going to impact them like just pour pouring a bowl of cereal you're truly missing the mark I, I love your story man i mean having priorities together also changes the way you lead your team at work because if it's important for you to yeah. be partnered with your spouse to be invested with your kids, to leave a conference a little early so you can get back for a soccer game. That's really important. You know, I'm bummed that you missed our session, but you know what? You got to be there for your son's soccer game. That's, you know, he's going to remember that kind of stuff. The dad came home mm -hmm. early from his work thing to be at my soccer game. You know, that's huge. How does that impact the way that you lead your team in having empathy for them and their situations and encouraging them to not burn themselves out of work, but to be invested at home and other things that are important for them? Yeah, I, I think I think you just got to trust your people. Right. Um, you know, if you hire the right people, have the right culture. And we you know, I really kind of always live by the mindset being coached. You know, we um, I did some training, professional training, like a high performance workplace. Right. And, and one of those things is like uh, all about trust trusting your people, not managing yeah. to what, what they would call like the five percenters. I think too often as leaders and especially as business owners, we end up feeling like we got to protect ourselves and everything is weird when you kind of break it down to its pieces, Trey. And this is what Sue would tell you at, at HPWP is like too often companies kind of regress towards that five percenter mentality, right? The way they write contracts, the way they do 
uh, vacation policies, the way they any everything is all because well, because there's going to be people that take advantage. Right. And so it's like you're managing to the lowest common denominator right. when you really That's think right. about it, because you're trying to. So it's like instead she her methodology and what was really great for me is she flipped it and was like, start managing to the 95. And honestly, if you identify five percenters, get them out of your business. That's you right. will be better for it. You will have more trust. You'll have more empathy. You'll get honestly way more production because every because because yeah. what do the ninety five percent think when you start blaring out all this stuff? When they're like, why are right. you? you, why, why you don't, you don't seem to have yeah. a lot of trust, right? We don't seem like there's right. trust and empowerment here. And so I, I think that'd be something I'd share with your followers: is like, are your rules, policies, everything that you do are they are they predicated on the five percenters, the ones that probably shouldn't be in your business? Or are they building towards the 95%, which is trust, respect, production, and a family? And so for us, I, I really, that's been great training for me earlier in my career in logistics. And I've carried that over because I want to focus on the 95. And if we identify five, then, hey, this, this probably isn't the right place for you. Yeah, I think that's so wise. Because when you have trust and you have respect, you get speed as a company. You gain speed because people aren't feeling, they're not looking over their shoulder at decisions they make. They're not asking for permission for everything that they do. They're starting to yeah. really just make decisions and, and you get speed when you get that, which is so critical. I mean, I, I love that. And you know, I was when I was on the stage with Brent and actually at one of his breakout sessions, Brent Orsuga, he said something that has just really stuck with me from that, that conference. And he said, you know, you are what you tolerate. And when you think about that 5%, you tolerate that 5% or you coddle to that 5% or you manage that 5%, then you're telling everybody else that's where they, they should just go down to there. That's where they should be. You know, that's who you are yeah. as a company. And I love, yeah. you know, Jim Collins book, Good to Great. You got to get the right people on the bus. You got to get the wrong people off the bus. And if yeah. people just aren't meant for the journey, it's okay because one, they're taking the seat of somebody else that's going to be right for the bus. And two, they need to find the right bus for them. You know, there's a right bus for mm -hmm. everybody. They got to find it. If you hold on to them, you're actually not letting them find that bus. So, And I think what people want, Trey, more than anything right now, because we were at that same conference, and one of the big questions is people and talent and acquisition. I think what people want, at least we've been successful in our hyper growth, right, which, which, you, which you know about, people want that authenticity, mm -hmm. right? And they want to know 100%. the mission. And so beyond compensation, because I'll have friends that reach out and be like, oh, like, how are you doing this? Money, money, money. It's like, no, it's about the mission. It's about the culture. It's about the authenticity. And mm -hmm. those are the professionals that want to join this journey with us. It's not, hey, can I get my top pay at freight? Like, if that's the thing that you're seeking, then, hey, obviously a startup's probably not the best place. You should go look at like a legacy company that has, like, there's your point, there's always a room and an opportunity. For us, it's this gritty, like, familial in the trench building something yeah. great. People love that part of the mission more than they even worry about the, the compensation from a daily basis. So, which I, oh, which so, has yeah. been great as we build this. No, it's so good. And, you know, being a leader, I think something that we also uh, shy away from is just being authentic, just admitting, I don't know what I'm doing, or I'm, I'm learning this. We're going to figure this out. Right. Like this, this, I haven't done this before. It's like parenting. Like I tell my kids all the time, listen, Hey, before you came around, I wasn't a parent. I didn't know how to parent. <laughs> I, I've never had a 14 year old before. This is my first crack at it. Okay. So you need yeah. to know that. And I just tell them that, you know, and what's interesting is that I think I gain a little more respect from them than coming across as a know-it-all when I'm not, I clearly don't yeah. know how to parent a 14 year old. I'm learning right now, you know, and yeah. next year is going to be new again. I won't know what it's like to parent a 15 year old, you know? And so I think yeah. having that authenticity of, as a leader and not being afraid just to admit I'm learning, I'm figuring this stuff out. You know, I think it's, it's that right. vulnerability, right? Can you fit? Right. right. And then right. as a leader, and I see a lot of leaders emote themselves as perfectionists and Hey, don't, let's not get it twisted. I am absolutely a type. I have an obsessive personality for the things that I'm on. But you also got to have that humility and yep. that vulnerability to your point to say, hey, I, I messed that up or, hey, maybe I could have done that different. Here's what I'm working on. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I think that's what people yep. want more than, hey, there's my leader. He's perfect. He's great. It's like, no, hey, he struggles oh. with personal life. <laughs> he struggles with professional life. He gets frustrated. He gets happy. He gets sad. Like these are the people that, that you know, I mean, you act like that. I think you'll find a, a group of people that will follow you into the trenches Right. Yep, Going back to right. some, of the, some of the sports stuff we talked about, like that's the key. Like, do you have a team that will suit up with you to run on that field behind you? Like, do gotta they believe in you that much? Yeah. And that's what you got to exactly. have to win, especially if you want to grow at the pace we're growing. Dude, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. I can't believe it. 30 minutes is up. I told you this is going to go fast. We're going to have to 
revisit this again. I have to have you back on. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for commenting. Catherine as well. Corey, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for posting all those transformational pictures of your journey as well. Um, but Shannon, thank you so much for being Appreciate on the show today. Man, this has been just tremendous. Definitely hope to have you back on uh, another episode here soon. And for everybody out there, make sure you come back tomorrow for uh, episode 31 with Anthony Pettit. Gonna, or Petit. Going to be a lot of fun to talk about him. And we'll see you next time on Standing Out, a daily podcast about sales, marketing, leadership, powered by Beta Consulting Group. Peace, everybody. Have a good week. I'll see you. Okay.